Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, this is part four of my series, The Bible Says. Okay, so we've established that uh, every person who is born uh, inherits three problems. Uh, it's a birth defect. One is the sin problem. Uh, we're, we're, we're sinners by nature and we act out and sin continually. Um, also, we are mortal. We have a sentence of death waiting for us. So man's born with a sin problem and a death problem. Uh, but let's talk now about what's this, the solution to the sin problem. First, let's look at Romans 10, 3. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. This verse here, better than any other verse I can think of, explains the situation of the world as a whole. Almost all people in the world believe this. Almost, uh, in fact, all of the religions of the world teach this. And that is, establish your own righteousness so that God will accept you. Uh, but this verse is saying, uh, if you're doing that, you're just showing your ignorance. Trying to establish your own righteousness will not work. You need to submit instead to the righteousness of God. That means that acknowledging, admitting that you can never be righteous enough to be accepted by God, no matter if you're, uh, if you can find other people who you think are worse than you, God is not going to judge you based on relative goodness. You're either perfect or you're unacceptable. <laughs> you're either perfect or unacceptable. So when you understand that uh, the righteousness um, is perfect righteousness that's required, then you should understand that that's impossible for you. Uh, and you need the righteousness of God. In Mark 10, 26 through 28, it says, And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but with God, but not with God, for with God, all things are possible. So this is the end of the account of Jesus talking to the rich young ruler. And uh, first of all, the rich young ruler calls Jesus good. And good is really another word for God. It just means there's an extra O in the word. But Jesus tells us this when his answer is, why are you calling me good? Good. Only God is good. God and good is the same thing. No, that's why no person is good, because you have to be God to truly be good. I'm, good means uh, there, there's nothing but good in you. Nothing but pure goodness. <laughs> so uh, that's the first mistake the rich young ruler made. But uh, when the rich young ruler leaves dejected uh, because he's not willing to sell all of his uh, property and give it to the poor and follow Jesus. Uh, the apostles asked Jesus this question then. In other words, what you're requiring him to do, what you've been telling us to do, all this time in the, we've been following you, been saying, cut out your eye if it makes you sin. Cut off your hand if it makes you sin. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Go and sin no more. J Jesus, you're, you're, you're telling us to do things that, how is it possible for anyone to be saved if that's what's required? That's what they say. They say, who then can be saved? You're giving us such an impossible uh, list of things we've got to do. And that's when Jesus says to them, with men it is impossible. So this is an aha moment 
They should be for the apostles, and hopefully this is an aha moment for you too, uh, where you come to the realization that all of your efforts are futile. You are in a helpless, hopeless situation. You can never before go before God and show that you're perfect. You're flawed, and therefore you're unacceptable. So, uh, but God, Jesus tells us, but with God, this is possible. But you need God to do it for you. How does God do it for you? God becomes your Savior uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's look at First John. I mean, John 1, 29. The next day John, this is John the Baptist here, seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Of course, uh, in uh, Judaism, they, they have a, had a sacrificial system, and they would sacrifice a lamb. The lamb had to be perfect without any blemish as a picture of Jesus uh, who lived a perfect, sinless life, no fault in him at all. And the, the lamb was uh, bled and died uh, as, a, as a picture of a future sacrifice that would be made by God himself. He would become a man, Jesus Christ. He would bleed and die for, for us. So in the, the, the Jewish religion, uh, in the sacrificial system, uh, these things are pictures uh, of this a great event to come, and John the Baptist is here for the first time pointing out this is the one. That was, that was John's John's um, primary mission to, to identify the promised Messiah, the Savior. So he says, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. So he, this Lamb of God, he's going to take away the sin of the whole world. Everybody in the world's sin is going to be taken away. Now let's take that uh, step clarify that a little further, Romans 3.25 says, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So here, uh, first time we see this word propitiation, it's a long, fancy word. It just simply means that the the what Jesus did by suffering, bleeding, and dying on that cross for our sins um, satisfied the requirement of God. It, uh, it was um, the, the sin problem is resolved. Uh, Jesus is dying on the cross and it is finished. It is accomplished. He, he did what he came to do. He did, in fact, pay for all of our sins. And uh, um, so propitiation means paid in full. The sin, your sin debt is paid in full because of what Jesus did for you. First John 2, 2 says, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So this uh, is very, very clear, uh, stating that not only to all of us who put our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior uh, are our sins paid, but even the people who have yet to put their faith in Jesus, atheists, Muslims, uh, agnostics, anybody, uh, their, their sins are paid for too. Every person who's ever lived, from their first breath till their last breath, all of their sins cumulative were charged against Jesus on that cross. The Bible says he became sin for us. So much sin was put on him that he was... Says, says he became sin. Uh, so the sins of the whole world, the believers and even the non-believers, the sins are paid for. Does that surprise you? Even the non-believer sins are paid for on the cross by Jesus. And now let's look at 1 John 4.10. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. So God understood that man was in a helpless, hopeless situation, that uh, uh, all the religions of the world are just feeble attempts by man to establish a system of rules and regulations to follow in an attempt to earn approval and acceptance by God, and they all failed because they're all based on the merit system. 
And uh, that system uh, has never worked. It never will work. So God, knowing that, says, I have to intervene. I'll do an intervention, uh, uh, intervene on man's behalf. So that's what God did. God came down from heaven, became a man, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And as a man, he was able to die and pay for our sins. So again, we see the word propitiation in that the sin debt is paid in full. So now the, the, the sin problem is resolved. Hallelujah! <laughs> the Bible says he's not holding sins against us anymore. The Bible says he's cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah! So now you're free to have a relationship with God. There is no more sin barrier separating you from God. Praise Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. But there remains the other problem. Remember? Man's born with two problems. The sin problem. Thank you, Jesus, for paying for our sins and resolving the sin problem. Now, what about the problem of the death sentence? The sentence of death is on all of us. We are all mortals. No one has immortality. So, can God resolve that problem for us too? You'll see in the next video. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.